welcome back to Mary's Cooking Lamb Shanks with a cheeky little celery ac mash and some roasted sprouts and carrots. Get on it. Hello friends, let's talk about dinner. Tonight we're having some slow cooked lamb shanks. Now I've never made this recipe before and look, I've already tweaked it without even trying it. So we're gonna call it my lamb shanks. But uh, yeah, if it doesn't work out, I guess I'll just do it again and call it the lamb shank redemption. <laughs> all right, here we go. You are going to need all of the limbs of one lamb. <laughs> That's horrible. Four lamb shanks, some red wine, two medium onions, a bunch of garlic. I'm going to say three to six cloves, depending on how badly you don't want him to kiss you some olive oil, Sandra and Peter, some fresh herbs, I've got some thyme here and a little bit of rosemary from my garden. You can just use what you've got but definitely get some rosemary in there because rosemary loves the lamb. A couple of teaspoons of brown sugar, quarter of a cup of balsamic glaze. Now if you haven't got balsamic glaze, then you can actually reduce down some normal balsamic vinegar, but it's easy to just buy it this way. Two cups of chicken stock, a cheeky bay leaf, and these majestic vegetables, celeriac, carrot, Brussels sprouts, and ye humble cauliflower. I think that makes for a delicious combination of food. All right, first things first, if I were you, I would turn on your pan right now. If you've got like a lovely one of those Dutch ovens that you can pop in the oven without melting it all away, use one of those. I'm gonna use a heavy cast iron pan and I'm just gonna cover it with foil. But if you've got one with a lid, that's what you want. So I'm gonna pop that on the heat right now so it starts to heat up. So when I put my lamb shanks in there, it sizzles. It's time to oil up these babies. Give them a drizzle of olive oil all over. May as well get them all involved. Ooh, that's some slippery lamb shanks. I like a good whack of salt and pepper. I'm all about the flavour, you see. Okay, we need a little bit of oil in our pan, so let's go pop that in now. You don't need a lot. I would say maybe a teaspoon. My pan's already quite hot. Woo! I'm going to start searing these just two at a time. Let's see if they're all going to fit in here. They are going to struggle. <laughs> These are not all going to fit, but I'm going to brown them separately and then I don't think it'll matter that they're poking out. All right, we're going to make our glaze. You're going to need a bowl or a jug. And we're gonna start by pouring in two cups of chicken stock, a quarter of a cup of the balsamic glaze. We're gonna take the leaves off our lovely little rosemary. They smell so amazing, these herbs. I like a lot of rosemary. I like a lot of herbs. I'm a herby kind of girl. And thyme. Thyme is a little trickier because you really do need to pick all those little leaves off. And you know what? Thyme takes time and that's why I'm just shoving the whole lot in. I know. I know I said you need to do it, but no. Nah. I don't have time for thyme. <laughs> we'll pick them out later. It'll be fine. Now I, I've had 
the time of my life. Okay, you need a cup of red wine. I don't really measure normally, but I will this time. Why not? Keep you all on your toes. Popping in a cup. And the red wine I'm using is a Merlot. Oh, what's this? Oh, don't mind if I do. Do not mind if I do. Cheeky. All right, got to be some perks to cooking dinner. There are so many perks because I love to cook. All right, to that I'm going to add a little bit more salt and pepper. Just a few wax of each. Probably don't need too much salt because there is chicken stock in there. Some pepper, a cheeky little bay leaf. He finds his way into every recipe even though nobody really knows why. To aid with digestion or something. And we are going to chuck some, a oh, little bit of brown sugar in there. I feel like the sugar is needed to just balance out the acidity of the, the vinegar and the wine. Just taking these out once they are browned on all sides. I don't know why my pan is smoking so much. Doesn't it know it's bad for it? <laughs> Before we do our onions, let's just smash up our garlic a little bit because he's going in the glaze and you may as well do it all together. These are little cloves from my dad's garden, so they're a little bit fiddlier. Just gonna finely, well, <laughs> there's not really anything fine about it. Let's just chop this. Chuck him in. Lovely. Okay. Pretty sure that is the whole glaze done. Onions. I'm gonna chop them into wedges. Check your oven on to 180. We're gonna pop a little bit of oil back in the pan. We're gonna bring it up to a heat and then we are going to fry off these onions. Don't make it too hot, fellas and ladies out there. We don't want them black. We just wanna get them a little bit cooking. Sizzle. And I want to bring that up to the boil. Take a moment. Starting to come up to the boil, so I'm going to add in my lamb. And let's see if I can fit them all in. This is meat Tetris. Oh yeah. Oh, this little guy, he really wants to get in the bath. I would like to make a joke about the fact that this is what it looks like when my husband and I had, try to have a bubble bath together. Let that all boil together for two minutes. All right, after two minutes, you want to cover it. So if you are one of those lucky people who has a lid, just chuck your lid on. Okay, we're gonna pop him in the oven, on a moderate oven, for one and a half hours. You're not gonna see him for a while, so this is the point you say, shanks for the memories. Ugh. Oh, that's heavy. Oh. Goodbye. to introduce you to my friend Celeriac or Celeriac depending on who you are. I believe he is the root of the celery plant but I cannot be sure that you have Google as much as I do. All I know is if you're trying to avoid those starchy carbs like potato and flour and all of that kind of thing, if you're trying to be a bit keto, pretty sure Celeriac is where it is at 
for you. And look, I discovered him when we were doing a no sugar, no carb, crazy diet, which was actually awesome and I felt fantastic on. So if you're out there and you're not eating potatoes and you've been making cauliflower mash and you're filled with bitter disappointment with every mouthful, this guy, he's gonna change your life. Yes. You need a sharp knife. Look, I'm just using the one I used with my onions and garlic and that's fine. And you do actually need to take the outside off. Now, it's, celery acts do actually come in various shapes and sizes. I like to just pick one that looks like it's the biggest actually because they are usually sold per item. So this one was $4.50 just from my local Coles. Um, you can actually get them from fruit and veg markets and they're usually better probably a bit fresher but they do usually cost a lot more they can be like $14 a kilo so anyway I would generally use half a celery ac at a time because they're not cheap and they do have a a distinct flavor about them so I'm just going to use half of this like so actually I'll have a little bit more Just get any yucky looking bits off it. There you go. Other uses for celery ac are you can grate them up and put them in a salad like a coleslaw. I never have. I did try roasting them once. It was foul. Don't do it. Blech. It's got a weird stringy texture if you do that. It is not a substitute for potato except for in mash. I'm going to chop him into cubes. And later, when our lamb is closer to being cooked, I will be boiling him in a little bit of water, or you can use veggie stock if you want to, along with the same amount of cauliflower. So half and half. You might have noticed my shout out board today has three lovely names on it, Tamanu, Lottie and Solly. They are my sister's kids and they live over very far away in Coranda near Cairns. And I gave them a shout out because they've been making their own cooking shows inspired by me, of course. <laughs> anyway, you three are amazing. I miss you, I love you. Ugh. If only you lived here, I'd have you on the show. While I peel my carrots, perhaps you'd like to have a little look at what has been going on in your homes and the yummy food that you guys have been cooking. So these guys are gonna be your mash and the carrots and the Brussels sprouts are gonna be your roasted veggies. Because I really feel like once you put the oven on for any kind of roast meat, you may as well roast a few veggies too. Why not? Okay, can we talk about sprouts? This is an underrated vegetable. Many of you, many are haters out there and so was I. I did once vote it as the worst vegetable of all time but now, thanks to my very handsome husband, I have been redeemed and I now love the humble sprout. In fact, I love it roasted, I love it fried with bacon and onion. That's probably all, do not steam them. I think Richard put it best when he said, a steamed Brussels sprout tastes like someone planted a fart and this is what grew. So, yeah, I'm going to show you how to prepare them for roasting. I like to chop the end off. You can either put a cross in the bottom like this, or do what I do and just cut them in half. I particularly love it when the leaves get a little bit crispy and a little bit burnt. Fun fact, Richard cooked Brussels sprouts for me on our very first date which we didn't know was a date at the time because we were just friends. But a few sprouts and a couple of glasses of red wine and we were in love, in love. Well, I was. That was almost five years ago to the day. So how about that? Hip, hip, hooray for love. 
and hip hip hooray for sprouts. I'll show you what I do to my roasted veg. I just get some sort of bowl, chuck my veggies for roasting in, a smackerel of olive oil, good whack of salt and pepper. If you want to, you can put some garlic in there, toss it all around and into a roasting pan. The more space you give them, the more roasty they will get with lovely edges. If you cram too many in, they will sort of stew rather than roast. And then to that, I'm gonna add a few little sprigs of these lovely roasting herbs, thyme and rosemary. Then you can put that aside because that can go in the oven probably about 40 minutes before you want to eat, depending on how crispy you like your veggies. Putting a little bit of water into a lovely saucepan and we'll put all of this in there. You don't need too much water. You kind of want it to steam and boil at the same time, so don't like cover the whole lot with water. I'm gonna put a lid on there. I'm gonna leave this little guy till it's time. So now we've got about an hour or so before we need to do anything. It's time to clean up, then kick back, relax. I might even have a little bite of chocolate. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's been one and a half hours in a moderate oven. Smells really good. I haven't had a peek yet, so let's have a look. We're gonna take the lid off. Oh yes, looks so good. By the way, I grabbed these guys out and I've chucked my veggies into the oven. So now, come in and have a little look at these guys. We're gonna turn them over. See how all of the fat that goes all the way down the end of the bone actually just cooks away and that all happens naturally. So you don't have to do any fat trimming before you put these in. In fact, I beg you, please don't try and trim them. Okay, this is looking good times. I'm just gonna move them around a little bit so they're fitting nicely. So he's now gonna go back into the oven for at least half an hour. And at half an hour, I'm gonna take him out, have a little look at the meat, see if it's falling off the bones, if it's getting a nice brown, delicious stickiness on the outside and uh, go from there. Might need a little bit longer, might need another hour, who knows. I'm gonna lead, leave the lid off so that all of those lovely juices will hopefully evaporate out a little bit and reduce down and then we'll have a yummy little sauce a jus, if you will, a gravy to put on our mash. All right, these guys are going back in. Half an hour to start with. I neglected to tell you that you need a leek for your celery ac mash. Now you can do it without a leek, but we have some in our garden and I've always done this recipe with a leek. Now look, here's a little bit of a sad looking leek, but I'm so proud of him because we grew him ourselves. With a leek, they are filthy, filthy creatures. So you need to cut off the bit that you're going to use, which is not a lot to it. Then cut it down the middle. And you'll see there's so much filth in there. We've got to give this a really, really good clean. I didn't get a whole lot out of this guy, but he's clean at least. Roughly chop. Add him to your cauliflower and celery ac, and I'm gonna pop that on to boil. Time is of the essence because I've got a whole bunch of hot food in front of me, but I just wanted to show you all of the elements. So I have here, these beautiful, I have actually taken them out of the oven a little while ago and I will probably pop them back in to heat up again. This is our roasted vegetables. Um, the beautiful Brussels sprouts, all caramelized and delicious in with those herbs and the carrots. And I'm actually gonna move those over 
to the side because I'm going to take these gorgeous, beautiful shanks. Look at them. Honestly, though, that is incredibly delicious looking. I'm just going to sit them here because I want to reduce down the stock and the juices to, to, to make a lovely gravy. You don't have to do this, but you can get straight into eating them from here if you want to. But I'm going to pop them there. That's going to rest the lamb. And it's also just going to keep it all a bit warm if I pop some foil over it. Okay, if you have a look in here, it's yummy, oniony sort of thing. Before I do my jus, I'm just going to put a big knob of butter into my celery -ac. And I'm going to whiz that all up, but I'm just going to let that melt in there for a minute. All right, high heat, let him reduce down. That's yummy. Upon further reflection, I reckon definitely use veggie stock instead of just water, but it's still yum. Okay, checking on our jus. I know it's looking a little bit frantic now. This is actually what I look like moments before people come for dinner, where everything is just a bit like, ah, ah, ah. Don't let me fool you. This is actually very simple. It doesn't have to be frantic. Let's see if our gravy's okay. Nice big open wide pan means that it will reduce down quicker. Keep in mind that the more you reduce it, the stronger the flavour will be. Hooray for that. Don't want to burn off my flavour buds. Oh, yum. Mr. Beauregard, I do declare. That's actually so delicious. Oh, yay. I'm so excited. I'm excited to share this with you guys. So I'm going to let it reduce a little bit longer while I start to plate up. Richard, you better get excited for dinner. Well, we are feasting tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. So happy. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I now have a lamb shank recipe that I love. And I'm also happy that we're about to eat this for dinner. And I'm also happy that there's still half a bottle of red wine left. <laughs>